I was walking we do in a, Memphis. Did I we do a podcast? Kids, oh, oh, tied in a rebel. I was walking <laughs> in Memphis. <laughs> Reckon it, and their penises anything? were bitten off by turtles. Little seven turtles. Uh, do you reckon Elvis had anything to do with um, the the kids that died in West Memphis? Um, well, there's a lot of theories that Elvis was a bit satanic culty. What happens? It comes to it. In the, the, the big old oh, maybe they did. Oh. <laughs> so in the back, there is a light brown jacket. Uh, uh, story. <laughs> we got the first. We definitely won't be the last. We'd like to welcome you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Even though, actually, if you're listening, you should be probably 13 plus. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> to another episode of Not Another Conspiracy Theory. We get it. That's not it. That's not the name of the podcast. <laughs> no, it's not. It doesn't matter. We've been gone for six months. You can call back it what you want. Six months. I forgot what it was back. called. Back. Rebrand. Baby. Let me introduce. We're back. My co-hosts for today in Detroit, Michigan. Good timing. Dean Salter. How are we doing? Good He's to see you. Good to be back, boys. Be I'm, I'm down. Left, right, up, down. One or the other. I'll just dab. There we go. Hello, everybody. Sorry and it's been so long. Scoffing his face with an ice cream in York. It's JJ Jackson. What? Hell yeah. <laughs> JJ, the metal Best Jackson. tattoo in the world. Got to you for. I used to do Hell something. Yeah. That was it. I used to do that. I remember. I knew it was my uh, my thing, yeah. I thought it was, yeah. The I forgot it. I, I forgot, eyes, forgot my own tagline. <laughs> fucking shit is that? Yeah. It's because I'm eating sure, meat now. Sure my my watching... memory's just fucked. Yeah, you, you, you've, you've stepped away from the vegan world. and You broke a veganism. Yeah, it broke veg. I only eat things that I have to, like, have a thing to hold on the side. Chicken wings <laughs> and ice creams. <laughs> Great. Corn and cobs like as it. well. And, and, I just love corn and cobs. Kebabs. <laughs> kebabs. <laughs> anything, anything with a stick made of calcium. I was like, you've, you've gone fucking right off the deep end, didn't you? <laughs> oh, husk. <laughs> I only get my kebabs at two o'clock after kicking out time, even when I ain't been in the pub. Mate, I get a kebab. I actually started getting day. muscly as well, but I've uh, fucked my wrist, so um, that's fucked now. Uh, but, you know. Just use your other hand, Do, mate. Do, do it better. Hand. I do it better. <laughs> mm. I fucked this wrist, so. Yeah, no, bad wrist. But yeah, Hi. welcome back, everyone. How have you been? I'm what have you ben been Mills. Doing? Yes, Ben Mills. He's on <laughs> my right side. Shit. We're okay, crap uh, Steve at Jones. This. We're crap at this. Steve we? Jones. <laughs> Steve Jones. And yeah, we've got a couple of beers mm-hmm. on the go. Dean's not got a beer on the go today. No, nah, I've got coffee on the go at the minute. Same thing. Like morning beer, that is. Morning yeah, beer. Yeah, kind of like that. It's a bit strong, that. <whistles> but yeah, it's good to be back. Um, first and foremost, apologies for how long it has taken for us to actually get back round to it. Life just got in the way. I know we've used that excuse before, but this time it's actually kind of, I mean... Um, I really did. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll just throw out it. In January, my old man died. Uh, Months mm. after has been really shit, to be perfectly honest. Been seeing a psychiatrist. Uh, two months ago, however, my wife had surgery, uh, had complications. She should have been healed uh, in a certain amount of time. And in that certain amount of time, when she didn't heal, we then got a puppy, which we kind of timed well, but then turned out really bad because she had complications with her surgery. So then it ended up knocking her back another month with recovery. And that resulted in me looking after her and also a puppy, which has been an absolute living nightmare. But um, she's more able now, walking around. Life's a bit more cosy. So we've been able to, well, at least I've been available for the first time in God knows how long. Yeah, Yeah. man. Well, my eldest got chicken pox this morning, so that's good. Fuck. Uh, It's it's rampant. My uh, my best mate is, my mate's uh, kids have got it. Yeah. Um, and we yeah, and he just sent me a picture. He just said I hadn't slept for three days. <laughs> Poor sod. It I must mean, be. Is it anything to do with the monkey pox? Probably Ooh. not. The chicken and the monkey pox. Mm. Are they? Are they? No, it's not because mm. the monkey pox is sexually transmitted. I don't. And know we don't live I anything have. near the Duke mm. of York. I don't uh, think it's sexually <laughs> transmitted. It's, it's just. It's just close. Close contact. I don't think I ever had chicken pox. Good job. Well, good job not here, mate. Because. 
we yeah. you'd be getting it. Yeah, I'll be dead. Yeah, rampant. Rampant. Yeah, those chickens. And guys. me, I've done fuck all for six months, but now everything's come at once, so I'm really busy now. So these guys are free as a bird, and I'm tied down I'm like a like fucking... A um, I'm not free. Gulliver. Gulliver's Gulliver. travels. <laughs> yeah, Gull- you're a lot like Gulliver. <laughs> without the like giant Jack Black. Yeah, mm. the giant. Part. Yeah, I'm I'm the size of one of the people who tied him down, so they're just tying him on their own down, really, which is kind of some weird sort of cannibalism. But they're not eating him. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> I don't that's think they did. That's JJ him. getting back to eating meat. It's just the media. I know. All like, I can oh, think about is eating meat off the bun. <laughs> anyway, boys, a little less conversation, a little more podcast, please. It's yeah. time to talk about our subject today, which is if you didn't get from that amazing pun and segue, a little less conversation. It's the king, the king of rock and roll. It's not really a good impression, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. No. The king no. of rock and roll, Elvis. <laughs> Bruce mother, Campbell. Elvis, oh, no, Elvis Aaron yeah. Presley. A- Ellis A. A. Ron Presley. A. A. Ron. <laughs> I love that A. A. Ron. Fuck it. <laughs> A. A. Ron. <laughs> A. A. Ron. But yeah, Elvis Presley. Um, this was a request. Well, no, it wasn't a request because JJ suggested JJ it. JJ suggested it, like, it last six months ago when we did our last episode. And it's uh, it's and I've been I've been researching ever since. Now, when I was young, Life. the first ever time I heard of someone potentially falsifying their own death, it was Tupac Shakur. And I think we've all like all of the, the, all of us can agree that that was really probably the first conspiracy theory of an artist that we heard of someone faking their death. Um but it probably turns out it might have been Elvis, you know, yeah. like the earlier version. I don't know if there were anybody, any other sort of public yeah. figures that potentially faked their own death, but could be one reason why he's not here. Yeah, well, um, I, I, I've done, I've done now done a week's worth at least of research, and mm. uh, I, uh, you can have to convince me otherwise, Dean, but I just think the fat cunt ki- died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Think so too. I think the fat gun <laughs> ate too much and then died. Yeah. He had diabetes. Diabetes. He had diabetes, uh, uh, a heart problem. He was addicted to pharmaceutical uh, drugs. Amphetamine. Yeah. Amphetamine. And he'd taken, he ate a lot and he took so much like barbiturates and uh, opiates that he couldn't do a poo. <laughs> Yeah, so, dude, when you think about it, yeah, yeah, like it would obviously concrete itself in your fucking he, anal. I've had yeah. a lot of codeine recently, and I know the feeling. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, like I felt like I got varicose veins the other oh. day. I felt like my literally, I was sat there and I just felt like my legs popped. Ooh. Um, that could be an underlying health problem. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was. I don't know how something can compact so much bigger than your actual yeah. anus in your anus. Yeah, I so think this- right. It was tough. There's um actually a scientific term which I've read or I listened I heard when I was doing some research. I can't remember who it was. But there's a scientific like term for dying on the toilet from straining too much, but I can't find it. And it Holy was, shit, that's yeah, real. So, uh, but uh, I can't remember what it is. I thought yeah, South Park I thought... took the piss in that episode, but apparently it's apparently not. <laughs> yeah, you can strain and it's it's got a scientific name. Oh, vas vasovagal syncope. Vasovangal syncope. Yeah, What's that? It's, it's from Dying heart, on the bottom. It's, it's from your heart rate getting up too much um, when you're doing a shit. When you're that, straining. What a crap way to go out, mind the pun. What a, what a terrible what? way to go out. That was a good yeah. pun. That was, was a very good pun. If, yeah. if you did die that like that, right, I reckon this is this is probably where the rumours come from, is that Yo, if I die on the toilet, you'll tell people I'll fake my death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. So... I don't, think, I don't think I don't think there's the only one way you can die on the toilet either because I've just found something else is uh you can die due to a parasympathetic nervous system due to bowel movements. Wow. Oh, what a parasympathetic so, parasympathetic sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system uh and this may be magnified by existing circulatory issues. Oh so it's like a domino effect if you've got one thing and you just happen to fall into this one yeah. then it's like oh crap your body's like well we got both of them. Let's go, boys. Yeah. Shut down. Uh, my um, statistics are actually a lot higher than you'd expect. Oh God, go on. Um, <laughs> there's no statistics, but they just seem like they're higher. Oh. Than... <laughs> I mean, they're <laughs> higher than I would ex- <laughs> have expected. Expect because we don't know what they are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I fun. mean, 
<laughs> up until El- I knew about Elvis, I didn't know anyone died on the toilet, but fucking hell. Oh, God. I've, a lot. I, I remember... <laughs> Apparently, there's a questionnaire on Google. Did Judy Garland die on the toilet? Well, we don't know. Oh, no, sorry. Judy Garland did die on the toilet. Did she? Oh, she was, she was also addicted to barbiturates. Yeah. Uh, and this is, Garland this was attributed... sounds a bit like Graceland. <gasps> it does. Is it? Synergy, man. Synchro- Synergy, synchronicity. Here's yeah. the, um, if, if you're into amphetamines and all sorts of stuff... Just don't shit in a toilet. Yeah, just do and it. You're not going to die on it, are you? You're not going to yeah, die on she, it. Yeah, she was addicted to barbiturates and amphetamines, and at the age yeah. of 47, so her husband found her dead on the toilet. My amphetamines that I have to take, my methylphenidate for my ADHD, <laughs> makes me so constipated that I poo like rabbit, like a rabbit, like little little nuggets. Like Nesquik. Yeah, and it's yeah, yeah, but at least your stomach arms, breaks man. them down into little fucking things. Mine like are it's actual like boulders. Yeah. I have to like and this is pretty <laughs> I'm disgusting. Sorry, hold on. Sometimes I have to get a little little digit up there and just sort of feed them out. I'm sorry, but Ben just sat like, and said, oh, it's going a into a bag of old teasers. It's a real sorry. pain in the ass. <laughs> it was and like it was brilliant. The whole I, pain in the ass thing was mate, superb. I'm just I, more I, interested I, in him I, sticking I, his finger up his bum to get some nuggets out. Oh, coax them out. I, I, my, I'm that far into being a dad now. I'm six years in now that I pun and do dad jokes, and I don't even, I don't even, don't even... just go. I just plow through them like they just happen. <laughs> pro, absolute dad pro. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's a good thing or not. No. But yeah, so that, so I, I know. I think me and JJ have just agreed that we know how Elvis would have felt, but we have yet to die on the toilet as this. Even though we could have done because we've been gone for six months. Right, we could, yeah. People could no have one thought maybe they died on the toilet. We did it. We're back. We did, yeah. We didn't get scooped up by the CIA or MI5 or anything like that, or even no, Alex Jones the... or David Ike. Well, Ike. Ike's back. Ike is, is back. He? Yeah. It's since um since we've been gone, Ike has returned to the stage and he's selling tickets for like two hundred quid. Oh my god! He's going to the Glasgow show. Yeah, someone in the Discord was mentioning the it. the these shows that he does, man, are just so don't like. Don't get me wrong. He has points about like the elite cabal of the planet, and the lizard, like the all in royals. But like, yeah, the whole reptilian thing, and then the fact of like different dimensions, and the, like, yeah. well, I don't know. Just some of his spiritual stuff, I just think it's just like, oh, shut up. You guys are fucking lady. lunatic. Oh no, he's like full blown, like off off the side of a cliff, lunatic, man. But you've got to give him his due. He's made a fucking career out of it. So, yeah, you know. But, um, yeah, today, uh, what we will say is hopefully this will be like every other episode we try and have recorded. But um, I made some notes uh, chronicling the main important parts of the Elvis story when he was born and the things in between here and there. And don't get me don't worry, there is noncery in the uh, notes. It always stuff. is, so, mate. It's so, impossible yeah. not to be. Um, but as well, we will be getting to the conspiracies as to uh, allegedly why Elvis Presley didn't just die on the toilet because he didn't look after himself. But other things um, along the lines of uh, his middle name was spelled wrong on his gravestone, yeah. for instance, you know, like... Yeah, I've got some, I've got some go. bits on that. It's right. Just, uh, However, we shall begin, and I will begin as we usually do. Elvis Presley, Elvis A. Aaron Presley, was born in Tula, Mississippi, January the 8th, 1935. He was born uh, a twin, but his brother Jesse was a stillborn. His parents were poor. Sorry, Ben, go on. I was going to say that stillborn thing comes back later in life. Once he starts hitting the drugs, Jesse, he starts living with Jesse quite. Jesse becomes a big part of his life towards the end of his life. Jesse becomes a big part of his life. Like it's almost like he starts feeling guilty um, or he might've always felt guilty, but he starts verbalizing that to the people around him about his, his brother, his elder brother and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause that's nothing in my notes. So I must've skipped on the importance of that. So um, yeah, his parents grew up poor and mainly on like government handouts and stuff. Uh, Elvis was known quite commonly as a mummy's boy as well by relying on her emotionally when he had troubles during his rise to fame. In search of work, the family moved to Memphis, Tennessee in 1948 when Elvis was 13 years old. Turning 18, his first day job was driving a truck for an electrical company. And in the same year, he visited a local studio to see if he could rent some room, uh, rent a room to record some songs that he wanted to give to his mother. A little known fact that he actually recorded the song Mother before Danzig recorded the song mother huh no it's bullshit oh okay right. <laughs> <Mother>. <laughs> I <was gonna> say <laughs> that. 
a bit like, but like that's that, that's, like not, Calvis. that's not Brother. proper that's proper mama's boy like in my opinion i just want to record some songs to give to my mum not like oh, i want to be in a band i want to pursue music yeah. or anything but there you um, go mum yeah so uh yeah uh so we wanted to record a bunch of songs uh in a studio that he was looking at renting uh however the receptionist of the studio after hearing elvis record uh she passed his name onto the head of the studio sam phillips he was looking for a white uh sorry she passed his name on to the head of the studio who coincidentally was looking for um i've missed my bloody spot yeah, there we go he was looking for a white, for a white man, man he... with a black voice that's because of segregation right in, in the at the time it's exactly like there there's black radio and there's white radio which yeah. is like so and then the, the the best music was obviously the black music yeah and it and, was a lot yeah. of rate yeah a lot of radio djs they kept it amongst themselves that the the better the better records that would sell and would also perform on the radio were the black artists but right. optics wise and back then because america because of was, racism yeah was five percent more racist than it still is um it was obviously something that people really didn't um project uh, too much so yeah sam phillips was looking for a white man with a black man's voice uh so in 1954 phillips and elvis uh phillips had elvis come back to the studio when he was 19 uh to hear him sing and after doing so felt elvis needed a little bit more practice but he had potential to become a star scotty moore and bill black two professional musicians were asked by phillips to find a song suitable for elvis to perform and after hours of elvis performing and going backwards and forwards with the musicians they decided to um lay down the blues hit that's all right by arthur crudup um, did you did did any of you guys happen to listen to that song no nah. not a bad song I yeah. actually went and I was like, I want to kind of have a listen to this. I had a little like, bit of a listen to Elvis on the way here to the studio. Elvis um, or the Beatles? Who do you prefer? Oh, Elvis. Fuck the Beatles, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm glad we're on that. JJ? Oh, J Whoa. <laughs> 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 Elvis or the Beatles, bruv? Yeah, but I think I misheard what you... T Did you say fuck the Beatles? Yeah. <laughs> Mate, they're only the band. Uh, uh, they're only a band. Oasis ended up being. So. Can I just quote Scroobius Pip as well? Just a band. Just a band, mate. Just a band. Just a band. If they were that good, <laughs> why were? If they were that good, why they weren't? Why weren't they on the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater soundtrack? Exactly. Yeah. Come on. But, you know what I mean. But was Elvis? Was Elvis on it? He, yeah, he was. Nah. No, he was. Oh, fact, no, I think wasn't there a wasn't there a Tony Hawk Pro Skater where you could play it as Elvis? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I, think was, <laughs> yeah. like, totally, I think it was like THPS four. Argument settled. So, so yeah. it, the Beatles aren't as good as Elvis because he's they're not in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Fact. Imagine fact. Paul McCartney as a playable character in Tony Hawk's. <laughs> just a nan, just a nan kick riding around. A flip, kick a flip, kick <laughs> a flip. Peace oh. and love, baby. Kick and flip. Fuck that my guy. ex. <laughs> my ex wife ex can't kick flip. Lol. Because she's only got one leg. <laughs> hey, there we go. Harsh, harsh, yeah. very that harsh. That's very harsh. Okay, that so uh, the song was recorded and it was sent out to a local radio show, and within a few days was a local hit. And a me and uh, Elvis immediately began touring the southern United States. By the next year, in 1955, he had become a local a star. star. A star. Oh, right. Tonight, Matthew, I'm gonna be. A nonce a little bit yeah, later. So in his he life. he was, but basically he was he, he became such a big star because he was a marketable um, yes. rock and roll star, which they didn't have because rhythm and blues was just such a like a black music. Um, and it, the segregation, like um, I think only Ray Charles was like was one of the to big touring black artists of the time, and he was yeah. to play segregated shows. Mm. So it was kind of hard for him to get these big big shows. But Ray Charles was like the 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 pinnacle and then when elvis came along they were like white boy let's market him but it was interesting as well because um my dad mentioned a few times in the past that a lot of people believed if buddy holly hadn't died in the plane crash or disappeared in the plane crash oh, he yeah. would have <laughs> been in the way of elvis becoming what elvis was like apparently that was something back in the day yeah. that a lot of people would had, 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 uh... so you reckon that old colonel tom parker killed off buddy right <laughs> <laughs> yes, without a doubt. He yeah. is DB Cooper. 
Ba, ba, ba. Oh, did I just hit on something? Like, no, you didn't. No, no. no good. <laughs> right, <be> cool. <laughs> right, okay. But Music... we, we should definitely do D.B. Cooper next. Yeah, my brother I want to throw it that. down now. We should do D.B. Cooper next. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck's that? Uh, uh, JJ, this is going to be an interesting one. one. Yeah. You'll it's love this kind one. Of, it's kind of true crime and a conspiracy at the same time. Yeah. It's really interesting. And the story, amount of people dude. that like people said that guy was D.B. Cooper is just like... Sick. Mm. But yeah, we'll do DP Cooper next. Absolutely, man. And that'll be in two weeks' time, we promise. Right. Music promoter Colonel Tom <laughs> Parker put Elvis on tour with Hank Snow in February. The Colonel Hank claimed... Snow. If Hank Snow wasn't a black guy, uh, so... I, I hope Hank Snow was a black guy because that is the best name ever. And also a world racist, but also... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... Is Hank Snow there? If he's got grey hair or he's black or it's not worth it. It's just that's not a real name. So a lot of people, well, people listening at least probably heard me say like Colonel Tom Parker as a music promoter, which is interesting because he's an interesting character as it's in itself. Uh, the Colonel claimed to be from West Virginia, but was in fact from the Netherlands. And his name at birth was, I'm going to murder this, but Andreas Cornelis van Kujik, I believe. He worked in the docks in Netherlands, working on ships going from Netherlands to America. Uh, a lot of people had said as well that the way he emigrated or became a resident of America was that he just simply jumped ship um, during his job and just never went back one day. Uh, much of his life is largely unknown. He claims he served in the army, worked at a carnival at some point, and then into music promotion, which is the most bonkers combination of jobs, if you've ever asked me, and sounds like someone who's a con artist. Um, uh, he was allegedly a marketing genius, according to Elvis's manager. Uh, he would soon also be made Elvis's special advisor. Uh, as he grew to unseen, as Elvis grew to unseen heights of fame, his fans would worship the ground he walked on. His critics, however, often called him an agent of the devil who had been sent to disrupt the minds of children. Quite ironic, really, seeing as he ended up turning out to be a nonce. <laughs> <laughs> it is true when you think about it, but. Their efforts, their protest of F efforts weren't in vain, it seems. Um, his contact, uh, funnily enough, his concerts would attract protesters who would try to detract his fans from attending shows. Uh, there were often so many that police guards were hired. Uh, he was waited on after shows by angry boyfriends who would often attempt to jump him as he would leave venues. That's a bit much, really, when you think about it, isn't it? Like, don't get me wrong. I've yeah, got I know, feeling, mate. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you two must. I'm, you? I'm leaving oh. a gig and I go, who oh, is this black beautiful guy over there? But I had some chat. JJ probably knows as well. <laughs> oh, shit, our girlfriends. <laughs> Rock and metal version of Jason Momoa. Let me suck your dick. <laughs> Jason Momoa, Jack Black. I don't care. I want him in my mouth. <laughs> is that Steve Jones? It's, oh, no, it's, it's just Ben Mills. It's just, just, a, just Ben Mills. Yeah. From throw me under, it's just, it's just Ben Mills. <laughs> George Michael. Yeah, apparently George... George Michael. Oh, God. What? <laughs> Guys, it's when? been six months. Like, does... What was my hair oh, in the last episode? A young Larry? George Michael. Did I miss this or something? Did I have oh, hair in Phoenix. the last episode? Did we? No. Nah. Sorry, the yeah, last We episode? had very short hair. Yeah. That's sorry, a lot this? of hair growth for six months. Bruv, my hair grows so fast. Uh, right. Anyway, sorry. I'll carry on. I'll, ca- I'll carry on with my more thing. on Ben's hair next tell, week. Two tell weeks me, time. Do you go up to a mountain and dip your hair in and flip it Timote. around? Timote. Timote. I'm glad you got the reference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, yeah, getting jumped outside of venues. He started surrounding himself uh, with people that did anything he asked of them, balancing out the critics by having yes men at hand. This would potentially lead to i guess his well, downfall one of those, so it's a really weird thing actually about the people who are employed and stuff so he obviously like when he got famous he made sure his mum wanted for nothing and she was treated like a, a queen right yes but, absolutely his dad on the other hand bear in mind his mum dad was still together his dad yeah. he just gave odd jobs to yeah <laughs> that like, made his dad drive him around getting pizza around. And no, you're in charge of the cars and stuff but his dad also did fuck him up fuck him over lows as well oh like, right just by I making didn't... like bad business decisions Ah, oh, okay, okay. Including one that may be the reason that he might have had to fake his own death. In that case, interject at any point during my notes with this story where you feel like the uh, the, the moment is... Don't uh, worry, perfect. I'll interrupt. <laughs> I will interrupt. Okay, so the Colonel, 
the weird Dutch guy that we don't know too much about, managed to get him signed with RCA Records and over the next year gained the trust of Elvis so much that he became promoted to Elvis's personal manager in the uh, month of March 1956. He was then immediately booked on huge tour and had signed a lucrative seven-year movie contract with Paramount Pictures. Speaking of movies, have you ever seen the clip of Elvis in one of his movies when he's got a stonking hard on and he's dancing with some woman? What? There's a clip out there where it I don't Wait, know, I can't remember what movie it, now. it is, but he's dancing with Elvis a really, attract, a really attractive woman. Hard on. <laughs> don't Google that. Apparently probably... an direction that never got edited out. Ah, there you go. But yeah, um, I don't know who the actress is. Jeez, you, Louise. Ben Mills, yeah, ben Mills is production company edit uh, erections <laughs> in, don't you? Yeah, that's what we're called. <laughs> Can you see it? But yeah, he was. Um, it's a bit of a. It's a bit of a. A, a little bit of a. It, I mean, it could be like. It could know, be a tuft angle, on, it, on the zipper. It's the. But, it's know. the. It's the fold in the. It's the pleat. It's the pleat. Um, no, it's uh, if you get the. Um, the pleats. The Kirby it's enthusiasm. The reference there uh, yeah <laughs> yeah it's a bit of a bone yeah a bit of a bone a bit of a bone uh, bit at bit the of end of 1956 on, Elvis uh, this is how now Elvis was really sort of picking up in fame wise and this is a cool little fact that I think is interesting at the end of 1956 Elvis's signal uh, singles were responsible for half of the sales on RCA records and apparently at that time RCA records were one of the biggest record companies in the world and his own singles were providing half of their income. That's fucking bananas. That's I just mean, his singles, right? Right, just his singles. And like, I, and I'm not too sure, like, what? Um, well, yeah, nineteen. Uh, excuse me, nineteen, like in the fifties and sixties and stuff. But that is outrageous. Absolutely. I've just googled. Did Elvis have a big cock? <laughs> 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 no information. No information. I'm not, I'm not getting the information I need. Did no coroner just go like, hold on a minute? Well, I mean, he was that, about he was about twenty stone heavier when he died. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. They so. say for every for every every stone takes away an inch. So, so he had a he had an inny. Yeah. There's no. Big I'm not. I'm cock. not seeing any. Um. I'm not seeing <laughs> any uh, information about the size Big of his, cock. his member. Okay, I so... heard a rumor that he actually referred to his own penis as the king. So really? when everyone referred to him as the king, he referred to his own penis as the king. Yeah. Really? Also, somebody else who does that apparently is Maynard from Tool. Actually, refers to him his penis as the king. Really? Fucking. Yeah. I I'm, I refer to mine as Mount for Skinamanjaro. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that sound like a Game of Thrones character? Where, where, where did you get like that You're a lot name? Of skin, mate. Oh god. Yeah, like an elephant's trunk. <laughs> More like Is it like a hood? Foot. Just, just, just the skin, not the fucking penis like itself. A... <laughs> it's just like I'm the same, yeah, like that, like Dean. Yeah, I'm the it's same. like that. It's literally like that. Just yeah. the end of Ben's cock just just looks like this. Like a hood. Ben yeah. doesn't have a beak, a beak coming out. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, actually, in the last six months since we did the last bit of a podcast, I've been sterilized. Oh, you got a vasectomy. Yeah. So, nice, man. Yeah. Pew, pew. Hitting blanks. Um, anyway. Did they, want, Jen... did they want you to stop creating the Aryan race? Yeah. Well, yeah. I got, well, blo- <laughs> both my kids got, well, one of my kids got blonde hair, blue eyes. The other one's got blonde hair, gray eyes. Oh. Yeah. You, well, you know which one to leave in, leave the kitchen stove on for, eh? That's a Holocaust joke, kids. That's a Holocaust joke there. <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't get it. If oh, got, come on. I get it. I get it Which now. is a great segue. If you want some Holocaust jo- Holocaust jokes, head to uh, We Need to Talk About podcast, uh, oh, available yeah. on Acast, uh, Spotify, uh, YouTube, and where all the good po- podcasts are available. That's the reason yeah. we, haven't, we haven't done a podcast in six months is because Ben has been literally having a podcast with every single person he knows. <laughs> I've only done one. <laughs> I don't, oh, I'm not I'm jealous. Hurt. I'm not jealous. I you, you, can see, you can see other people, Ben. This isn't exclusive. You can do what you want. Well, I've had to because we've been waiting for this podcast to We're in open relationships. At least two episodes of that, and it's only been going a week. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Anyway, Genu- Cliff Richard, what's next? 
January 1957, he turns 22 and he uh, and he served a military draft notice to serve a minimum of two years. A lot of people considered this the end of his career. His manager, however, believed if he went ahead and pursued service with no special treatment, then he would win over his critics and come back more famous than ever. Um, which kind of makes sense, really, at the same time. But top marks to him for doing so. Yeah. Well, uh, in that, the... so during that time, that is where it would lead us to believe that Elvis may have become a bit of a spook. Dude. That's racism back Dude. then. That's racism back then. Dude. I thought you were doing a bit. You have just been, I might have to edit that out. <laughs> but that's the that's stuff we I know, that is the term that, that they would have used then, but I'm talking about... <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you you can just beep that out and I'll then just let beep people, that, yeah. I've 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 found that when you leave stuff like that in but beep it, you get more viewers because people go, Fucking hell, did you hear what he said? And like, what did he say? It was like, don't know, they beeped it out. <laughs> what could it have been? Could have been yeah. anything. He literally could have said anything. No, I'm <laughs> I, he was I, doing I was a doing, bit. I was I was just revealing some research that I did about um Elvis's military career. Uh, yeah, I he, literally he have made... the same article up about him being in the DEA. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's the DEA thing, yeah. But the DEA? I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you've got to edit two bits out. No, just leave it out. Leave it. People are just doing a bit. Down, like, it looks like he says, John's dead. Yeah. Oh, he said. He just said Paul is dead. Backwards. Paul is said. dead. Paul is dead. dead. Yeah. So Elvis wanted to. So Elvis loved the police and everything like that. He had a collection of police badges that he got from all different places. And if we were just going to jump ahead a little bit quickly, just because this yeah, is sure. a reference to his military career, he wrote to a letter to the president Nixon. On on it, while he was on a flight, saying I'd love to become a federal agent in at large, which is not a thing. This is a thing he decided, right? <laughs> a federal agent at large, and him at large because well, he could get in with all these like celebrities and stuff and narcotics people, and he wanted ah, to be okay. a federal agent. So that led people to believe that he 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 was a a spy, and then mm. um, but he also from his military career they reckon that he from then that's when he started out being a spy. And he, he would like tell on certain promoters and people that were involved in the drug trade and stuff. And that led him to then. So they... Go on, sorry. That led him to no, then. So... <laughs> that led him to then <laughs> be wanted by the mafia. And that's why he faked his own death. I never and, knew. Uh, and sorry, JJ, go on. Partly, ahead, partly another reason was apparently with the mafia thing was because he was getting quite cahooty with Nixon. Um, and it was Nixon who suggested that he became he would get in with all the all the kind of people who might be dealing with drugs. So Nixon was saying, wouldn't it be a great idea for you to infiltrate these groups, play like you're their pal because you're like this big celebrity, ah. and then fucking grasp and then grasp them all up. Yeah, yeah. But the, but then there's a follow up theory to that that their people believe that he didn't fake his own death. He went into witness protection. Yeah. Witness protection um, because he'd had yeah. he'd had attempted hits from the mafia. Yeah, but we can talk about that later. I'll let you catch up. Can I just say as well? I had no I idea the word please. "spook" was also another name for a spy. <laughs> <laughs> I never I love knew. how you just dropped it though, like, like in that middle of that. Like, and well, because I thought um, it was a bit. <laughs> it was a bit, but it was just a bit of the podcast. <laughs> oh fucking hell! <laughs> I apologise. Obviously, that's oh, not. Okay, yeah, that's not because we, we bleeped out and you said it's... Batman. So, and now you're going to have to edit every part out that we keep talking about. <laughs> no, I, don't, I think we just cut it back so people are just really confused about what. Then we'll have to edit that bit out. I just can't believe that. I've never heard that term. Anyway, lesson learned. Right. Well, you should, <laughs> and, and, and you should watch um, Slow Horses called... on Apple TV. Then, sorry, Slow Horses on Apple TV. With Gary Oldman. It's absolutely amazing. Also, there was oh, a no BBC way, TV series TV. called that. Oh, there was actually wasn't about there? Yeah. spies. I never, no, well, never realised. Just about people in America that were 
of a certain yeah, background. But Dean's, get, yeah. Dean's getting confused because I have also thought that thought because in Back to the Future, and he goes, what a load of oh, yeah. eggs. And then, and then he calls him a spook. And then yeah. he says uh, something about crack and bread. That's yeah, it, that's, yeah. I never. That's well, awful. I, I don't. Time's, time's up, spook, guys. Spook is, We're getting cancelled. Spook isn't a spook isn't a racial thing. It's black people referring to white people uh, with the K, about the KKK. Yeah. So black people yes. call white people spook. Oh, is that the origin of it? Oh. Yeah, that, oh, I hate that's people. where it comes from. Yeah. Fuck well, them. you with Fuck that them. fucking hoodie on, mate. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Don't put it up. Don't put it up. <laughs> <laughs> time's up. Time's yeah. up, Dean. I'm out. I'm out. Sorry, Time's boys. Up. <laughs> Did, look what Detroit's done to me. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Okay. Moving on. In 1958, his mother was hospitalized after her liver failed due to excessive drinking through stress and worry of her son's call up to the army uh, and taking diet pills to lose weight due to the tabloids. As that was one thing, even back then, like tmz in her to death almost you know right do you know what the weirdest thing that i well this is what i think the creepiest thing about um elvis and his mum is that he called her satin he called her satin and nick his nickname for her was satin oh satin oh satin Ooh. don't leave me satin don't leave me don't leave satin. me satin. can't can't do this i without can't live you, without you satin satin yeah, or satin weird man that is a weird Evan is pet name for your mum's sick anyway but Ooh, it's not like bad. one of those. Um, oh, brilliant! No. <laughs> it's not like one of those. <laughs> it's oh, fucking cameras. hell! Everything's going wrong tonight. Um, it's not like one of those things, like a Greg Davis like nickname, though. You know, like Monkhouse, because his what was it? Because it what? Well, no, they called him Monastery because he was called Monkhouse. Like it's not like oh yeah, it's not play like, on words. She, she didn't sit in bird shit one day so he just always called her satin or something <laughs> satin bird shit <laughs> yes. yeah. that'd be great well mama remember that time you sat on my bench and you got bird crap on your bow yeah. and that's why I call her satin <laughs> I, don't know why, I, don't know, I don't know what my impression was satin shit satin shit, satin. Hammer, bro. Satin shit. No, this is now my uh... <laughs> satin shit Fucking satin hell. shit is brilliant that's satin top shit. draw that is Okay. Oh, so... there we are. We're back. I don't hey, know why. We it just switched. <laughs> Satin shit. <laughs> so, Satin um, shit. And, and August 14th, <laughs> at the age of 46, um, unfortunately, Elvis's no, no, mother, for Saturn, no. mother died, and Elvis was by her bedside after being granted oh, leave Saturn, from the no, military. Saturn, no. Oh, Satan, don't oh, do this Saturn, to me. No. He soon turned to alcohol, drugs, money, and women to fill the main support that was now missing from his Mom's life. Mum's gone. He would the continue. The only thing that can fill that void is sex, is drugs, and rock and roll. Sex, drugs, nonsery, and rock and roll. I guess. Yeah. Well, the, is he started doing nonsery yet? Well, we're getting there. We're just about to get there. I also didn't know that. So you two have just said that Elvis Presley is better than the Beatles. Have any of the Beatles been done for nonsery? Paul McCartney. No, no uh, all of them are dead yet. Your, your side. Paul McCartney with the has guy got an, an air of an air of molestation about him. Yeah. Good old darling. You thought she covered it, covered around my house after school. He was b- good friends with Cliff Richard at some Birmingham point. Birmingham now as well, yeah. yeah was that Ozzy Osbourne or Paul McCartney? <laughs> 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 oh, right. Meat free Mondays. Meat free Mondays. He would continue chase, chasing this feeling of contentment for the rest of his life. Bum, bum, bum. After his mother's funeral, he was deployed to West Germany, September 1958. Now the nonsense begins. Uh, he was a driver for a platoon sergeant, but he was given special privileges. He was allowed to live off base and return, uh, rented out the top floor room of a hotel and filled it with people he could trust, all the yes men and such. Uh, filled his it. Father, trust me. Trust me. His father, grandmother, and two friends, a dentist, a barber, and a driver. He was the boss at the hotel. Nobody could tell him what to do. His two friends would pick up his dry cleaning and press his uniforms. And they didn't take, and he didn't take kindly to people that would question his authority. He was uh, yeah, very. He was also known to be very generous with his money as well, like um, soldiers on us. soldiers on base that couldn't afford to get back home or something like that or whatnot. He would pay for like them to get back home and such. So he was obviously probably making friends and doing so, so because almost like Prince Harry being in the army, it's a jerk. 
Maybe so, yeah. It's because yeah. he got called yeah. up, he has to officially do it. Well, yeah, you they can't really they sort of like, but you know, I'm staying at a hotel, lads, tonight. Sorry, you're all in a tent. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Did Harry stay in a tent, though? <clears throat> no, Harry probably stayed in a fucking palace. That's what I'm. He, there's all them photographs of him, and they're like, oh, yeah, old Hazzy used to like set up his bed next to me. <laughs> old you know, for a fact that he was just like this with his blanket on, like, right, they're all asleep. Gets in his fucking helicopter, goes to his hill, and then fucking, <laughs> like, oh, bloody hell, it's half past five. We'll be getting up for fucking trumpeting slop. earlier on. It'd be gruel and slop. slop. <laughs> and okay, then he so... runs back to the camp and then goes there. Uh, one day while practicing army drills, Elvis was given just something to aid his just just practicing, not fully doing it, just a few prayers. I'll do a, prayer, a little bit of a press up here. I got the hips for this officer, no colonel, sergeant. I can do this. Look at me, throwing my guitar. These trousers ain't loose enough for me to swing my junk around, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Elvis was given something to aid his chronic exhaustion. A sergeant oh, noticed he was on the verge of collapse. Oh, and offered, offered him an amphetamine pill. The pills, of course, became part of his daily routine. Bruv. It's fucking bananas, isn't it? Just, just take some of this methamphetamine. Mate. Off you go. I know that world. I was in that world. Yeah. I, mean, I am. Look, yeah. I still your take amphetamines look, every morning. Your hips look like they're aching. Whack these down your throat, L. L. Go on, off you go. Um, no wonder his fucking hips were aching. Pardon? No, yeah, no, wonder, no wonder his yeah. hips were aching. Well, he liked fucking everybody as well, wouldn't he? He was quite a bachelor and whatnot, so... All that jiving. All the jiving. All the uh, hip frosting, flying the generals everywhere. Uh, Elvis's friends were tasked with finding dates for Elvis locally when he was living in West Germany. And on August 19, uh, 1959, drum roll, August 1959, 14-year-old Priscilla Bellew found herself on a date with Elvis Presley. 24 years old. What was the legal age no. of consent hmm. in Germany in 1959? Age of consent, 1959. Germany. Germany. And there was a war on. The ages of consent vary by jurisdiction across Europe. The ages of consent are between 14 and 18. Bastard. But, but we nearly had him. I don't condone it. And he was nonce but he wasn't breaking no laws but let's be real 14 year old 24 year old what are you going to talk about like this sorry. bloody war this yeah. war so what? this war so what's your favorite drug war, right what's your favorite drug girl so, i like harry um, bow elvis this isn't a nonce uh, by law, not, but... So, uh, I said this on the stream before we started. Uh, um, I think it's got something to do with royalty, this nonce, right? Because King of Pop, Michael Jackson, nonce. Yeah. King of Rock and Roll, Elvis Presley, yeah. nonce. Duke of York, oh, nonce. Top tier nonce. Yeah, so, but there has been no evidence of Prince. The prince being a nonce. No, just prince, not the prince oh. of England. <laughs> prince. Not, not the, yeah, uh, not Prince uh, Andrew. Will Smith was the fresh prince of Bel Air. He's not a paedophile. But yet. he did, he, he, um, he's secretly gay. Yeah, and he also he did out, kiss, his, kiss his son a bit weirdly on Ellen. Like, Who's he kissed his son. Gay? Um, Will Smith. Apparently, Will Smith, but I think he's not gay. I think he's just yeah. a little bit. Do you of not hear Bert Kreischer's he just story wants... about how he was gro- that Will Smith tried to groom him when he got out of college? What? Who? Yeah. Bert Kreischer, the comedian. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, also another another one for the royalty thing, which kind of completely validate, invalidates your argument, is the whole band, Queen. None of them are paedophiles. So uh, that's four uh, members. Uh, uh, Roger mm. Taylor looks a bit noncy. <laughs> I mean, there's a I love high much Freddie Mercury Brian did have May. sex with young boys as well. But. Yeah, and yeah, yeah Brian but... May looks like he's like reenacting like a, a, a rena- renaissance like judge thing. Have you, you ever like... thought if you were to paint Brian May yellow that he would resemble Big Bird from Sesame Street? Yep. <laughs> he just looked, he, I know, not his he just, he has the general shape of Big Bird. I, am, I wouldn't very be surprised true. if he was, in, he was in the suit, which probably makes him a nonce. Yep. I've got on blurry. We're, we're, we're reaching here. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
She went to a party at a, um, a house Elvis was renting. He sang for her and introduced her to his grandmother. On their second date, they spent, the to- uh, they spent most of the time talking to each other alone in Elvis's bedroom. They ended up seeing each other practically every night uh, and ended up sleeping in the same bed together. However, Priscilla always stated that they never had intercourse. Now, if the age of consent was 14 in Germany, would it matter? Ah, no, it's when he gets back to America. That's probably when it would matter. Yeah. Most, mostly uh, doing so. Anyway, I did put loads of, uh, loads of full stops at the bottom of the notes and nonce at the end in small font, just, just for the lows. Uh, okay. In 1906, sorry. As always on Not Another Conspiracy, it should be called Definitely Another Nonce. Definitely podcast. Another Nonce. <laughs> Not Another Conspiracy, but Definitely chron- Another Nonce. The Chronicles of Nonce. <laughs> In 1960, his deployment ended and he returned to America, leaving Priscilla in West Germany while he went on a comeback tour in the States. He promised they still had a future together. After his return, he also began starring in some movies. Most performed well at the box office with the movies that didn't have much substance to them, uh, but his more serious roles failed to do well. Uh, On top of the acting, he was touring in between, which resulted in Elvis relying on amphetamines constantly. His mood became so erratic. Oh, sorry. His mood became so erratic that he demanded his driver chase another driver down after he was flipped off. He then pulled a pistol on the driver, holstered it, and then smiled as if nothing happened. Sick. That that's that is, <laughs> that is a play. That is a move. It's punk as fuck. That, isn't that it? is punk as fuck, mate. I'd do that. Shoot if me. I, if I had a gun. Do you flip me with your finger? Don't don't flip oh, me. Oh, you're Elvis. Off, that's right, man. In the face, motherfucker. I'll put this bullet in your face. Not even Damn using straight. a gun. Yeah. Damn straight. And these Elvis impressions are sick. We're getting there, aren't we? Mine's mine only comes from impersonating Bruce Campbell impersonating Elvis Presley. Mine so that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, he, that nowhere. Just just channeling <laughs> the king. What about the nonsense? Channeling the king in my dick. Oh, cool. uh, in 1962, at the end of uh, at, at the age of 27, Elvis flew 17-year-old Pre- uh, Priscilla out to Memphis twice from Germany. She was determined to do... Sorry, Ben? Why don't you just leave her there? Did he... right. So she flew her back? He flew her back uh, twice, just for, like, vacations and stuff. Uh, holidays, sorry, the American coming out in me there. Uh, she was determined to do anything to stay within his close circle and would also take amphetamines to keep up with his busy schedules and sleeping pills to come back down. Uh, he convinced Priscilla's parents to allow her to finish her senior year of high school in Memphis. Um, he would buy her clothes and give her direction to change her looks and how to behave and had the dentist put porcelain over her teeth and dyed her hair black so it looked more like his own. Not much of a control freak at all. So, sorry, he he made her look like him? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> That's sick. Gangster move there. Gang- gangster move there. Maybe Priscilla is I got this 17-year-old girl. She's 17, but she looks look like me, right? She's not <laughs> what did you say, She's JJ? I said maybe Priscilla is Elvis. Maybe he morphed her that much into him, and then he turned into her, and then he, she just fu- he just fucked up. Yeah, maybe. Could have so done she- that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's highly unlikely, but... Uh, although during this time he continued dating women behind her back but decided to propose to her before Christmas in 1966. Uh, Elvis became tired of the paint by numbers roles he was cast in and the music he was putting out and suddenly felt like he had become a laughing stock. Uh, he began uh, he um, became depressed and started binge eating and taking even more drugs. Uh, he ended up overweight, his hair was thinning and his skin started looking terrible until his manager stepped in. Uh, summoned the members of his crew, gave them an earful, and sacked a few of them. And obviously that's what happens when you end up just getting a load of yes-men around you. And it turns out he was actually, well, allegedly it turns out, he was quite a bit of a prick when he started uh, getting a bit more famous and more money and flying people in and out of the hotel rooms that he was renting or the, like the top floors that he was renting. So it's probably wouldn't, no surprise. Wouldn't we all, wouldn't we all yeah. become a bit of a prick? Probably, Look probably. At Kanye West. Con- Kanye West. Kanye West. Like he's he's absolutely lost or the plot. Or Yee, Yee. I he, believe he exactly. desires. He's he's probably as big as Elvis was at the time. Maybe so. Nah, Elvis was well overweight. <laughs> Kanye West, <laughs> well. Kanye West oh, goes to the gym regularly. 
does he? Well, probably. He probably goes to the gym, but I don't. I probably just talks about himself. Probably <laughs> just talks about that he probably just goes own gym and he just like it's just loads of mirrors and he just like walks around it. I don't <laughs> need to do selfish. this because I'm the best, and that's it. And then he just yeah. out. I reckon Kanye. I just think about growing muscles. <laughs> Okay, in uh, it 19- Jesus for Christ's sake. Yeah, ye, yeah, or say ye or something, isn't it? I am ye. Jesus is basically Jesus, right? It's Kanye Jesus. Uh, and even did, didn't he perform he his last ye- album and that Yeevis. was it? He should call himself Yeevis, like Elvis. Yeevis. Then he is. Um, oh, Yelvis. Yelvis would be better. Yeah, that sounds like a really good metal band. Yelvis. We put our way, Yelvis! That was brilliant. I was almost in metal. fucking. It Steve, ring, ring fucking Steve Jones up and see if he wants to relive his fucking shit. <laughs> You've got an idea. For <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Elvis. Elvis! Brilliant. Elvis, fuck's sake. Uh, he married Priscilla in 1967 after sorting, uh, sorting himself out uh, after sort of the intervention with the manager. Uh, she fell pregnant not too long after. And on February the 1st, Lisa Marie Presley was born. Uh, however, Priscilla's fears had come to fruition where Elvis said that he could no longer be sexually attracted to a woman that had had a child. Because he's with sexually child. attracted to childs. Hey! <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Um, Elvis left for a comeback tour uh, after the birth of Lisa, Lisa Marie. Um, their relationship soured and Priscilla wow. ended up having an affair with a karate teacher na- named Mike Stone. Wow. That is Mike my favorite Stone. bit of knowledge ever. Yeah. The, the two of them with a karate teacher in like a strip mall or something yeah. like that. The most yeah. famous man, yeah. his wife was like, my name, <laughs> my, what, what was his name? Mike, Mike Stone. Stone. My name is, he, he's just one of these like pseudo karate people though, that has his what own brand of, dojo? he has his own yeah. brand of fighting that isn't real. We teach you how to protect yourself in any situation. I'm Mark Stone, a banging Elvis's wife. <laughs> I just throws that in at every introduction. Welcome and, to my dojo. And I bet he looked like the karate guy from Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Like the American trousers or with the bandana or on. Or the one that Kenny Powers does as well. Is that that is that one? Uh, Kenny Powers and the I don't Kenny Powers, man. Yeah. Uh who who's that? Danny oh, McBride. Yeah, Danny McBride. Is it related to Austin? Austin. No, Austin. you know who Kenny Powers is. Oh, Austin right? Powers. Oh, no, no, you know. You he's bound and down. Houses, That's right? it. He's bound and down. That's it. But yeah, right. Mike so Stone. Everyone before, right. So there's a, the, everyone needs to take a break for YouTube to go to this YouTube and go and Google the foot fist way. Right. And that is Danny Bride's when he played a, a karate um, instructor. And it is by far one of the funniest films ever. But the I assume. Foot Mike fist Stone, way. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm. It's just so funny. I need to check this out, man. Yeah, it, Danny, it's Danny McBride, so it's I'd Danny love McBride, it. The foot yeah. way. That is what Mike Stone looked like. Hundred <laughs> percent. That is that is Mike Stone, and that is the guy that Priscilla was cheating. So on. their affair continued for a few months up until Priscilla filed for separation in February 1972. Did she stay uh, with Mike Stone after that? I don't know. I tried looking for a or little Mike. bit of information. I feel like Mike just got trapped in that. You know, it, Mike probably got his fingers burnt. Well, she was probably like, I want more than this karate strip mall life, Mike. Yeah. He's like, we're trying to change him. The wind decides where I go. He like perches himself on a tree, like crane style every night. No, she's, she's like, like get, get, come down, dinner's on the table, Mike. No, I must be Mike Stone. Yeah, she, she was with Mike Stone for 1972, but she never, she, yeah. Never went much further, yeah. Um, Elvis became even more depressed. His attitude changed, and the only people who would, uh, who he would uh, find trust with are his doctors. Uh, no, yeah. sorry, hold on. Elvis we, became we more depressed. Part actually... Where Elvis, you know, as well as being a paedophile, actually did um, then rape Priscilla. Whoa, yeah, news to me. He, after the, she announced the split, Elvis uh, requested to see her in his hotel suite. Uh, and then he force, forcefully made love to me. That's what she, that's to quote Priscilla. I he, never raped her. her. This is how a real man makes love to his woman. I, I never raped her. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wanted to, I uh, wanted to do said, rap music, said, that's, is what I said. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. never knew that. That was, At least that wasn't included in the research that I was looking for. Um, yeah, Elvis became more depressed. His attitude changed. And the only people um, he would trust were um, 
uh, was this? Oh, I've missed, I've missed words out on my notes. I apologise. Um, the only people that he would end up trusting Marshall were his doctors Cook. who ended up pumping him with injections full of uppers and downers and sometimes multiple times a day. Uh, his health deteriorated and he kept himself in his bedroom and would only see his doctors and occasional girlfriend. But despite his poor health, thought he could make another return to touring. He had planned to tour again at the, um, uh, beginning from Memphis in August 1977. However, it never happened. Uh, the morning he was to leave, he woke up dazed and aching, had two injections, but after a few hours demanded a third injection. He, was then, to, uh, he then told his girlfriend, uh, Ginger Olden, uh, he was going into the bathroom to read and infamously he never, never returned. <laughs> never returned. <laughs> She found him dead in a puddle of his own vomit with a, oh, no, uh, and it turns out he died of a clogged colon. No surprise with the amount of fucking drugs. The official, that was, his... uh, the official cause of death was a heart attack, right? Yeah, uh, over, yeah, clogged colon, overworked heart, and 14 different drugs found in his system. So, which, yeah, is, it... which is called polypharmacy. It's a, it's a, a type of death is called polypharmacy. Uh, is a, would that be the cause of death? Which is, with uh, obviously the ph pharmacy being involved in half of it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. How you can die from a clogged colon. My colon's clogged. I mean, eventually you will poisonous. die of a clogged no, you, colon. You, you, yeah, you can die. Which, yeah, because you can't. Yeah, your body is just evaporating shit even more, and like through the thing, and you can't. You can't. It's like this. There's, there's people that if, goes, if it's like if um if there are people that haven't colon. been able. I, I people that haven't been able to like urinate for like weeks or days or something like that. Mate, if you've done, I've done enough pills that I haven't been able to piss for a really yeah. long time. And then I was when, in Ibiza, and I was standing at the toilet for, at a urinal for like 45 minutes going, I really need to piss and it won't come out. I, 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 there was a group of us that we'd never met each other until we got to that urinal and we we're all trying to egg each other on. We were going, <laughs> Go on, mate! Just scream, screaming at the someone key. Make, Everyone's someone king. make water noises. Put the tap on. Like, was that because you, uh, water was 13 euros a bottle and you refused to drink? <laughs> Probably. But I really yeah. needed to piss. And it, like, I was, yeah. when, it was like on the tip. Like You could feel it building up and it never came out. I was expecting it to come out like the ooze in Ghostbusters 2 out oh. the bar. So oh. you know the feeling of, of the, dri the dribble in your piss is actually a, a sensation that triggers to the end of your penis. That's another thing. It's actually the feeling at the end is right at the base. Really? Yeah. So when you feel, you know, when you're like, oh my God, I nearly pissed myself. It's actually just because you have nothing to stop piss from coming out like further oh, down yeah, your yeah, dick, yeah. it's all right. at the yeah, base. Yeah, yeah. So literally, well, if you were like, if you literally like felt like you pissed yourself and then tipped your dick down, not, I don't know why you'd have an erection when you were trying to piss in a beefer, but in the morning, if you, if you like tipped your dick down, it wouldn't dribble down. You, everyone think everyone thinks they're like holding it here, but they're actually holding it. Right. Here. Yeah. Well, well, it's a little bit further I in. That. So I, um, yeah. I, what I was thinking is that I wish that scientists could take the ability for you to go, you know, when you sniff, you go like that. To bring in like the snot, if they could take those, the, the whatever causes that that muscle there, they need to put that in your dick so you can sniff in at the <laughs> end of the piss. You can, you just get the last little dribble to bring them back in. Yeah, but you're the same as me. It's because of the it's because the elephant's trunk at the end. So that's, it's the Mount you, you're pissing you're going. pissing into the elephant's trunk and he no, can't no, keep I his. Pull it back. I'm always a pullback before I piss guy. Oh, uh, you see, I've I've got a, a piss in there, so like I struggle because it's got oh, two it's very like... two two holes. Like... It's like a, yeah, wow, brilliant. Yeah. I just yeah. piss normally. I just I you just sit piss. down, piss, don't you? Do? Right. <laughs> I, well, I just piss well, like I, any normal man. I just I sit down. What? Well, I've I've started sitting down at night when so I don't turn the lights on because our light in our upstairs bathroom's got a fan that comes on, which it nice. won't. But I was scared that it'll wake the kids up. Then you have to deal with the kids. So yeah. I just go. I sort of. Sort of like, I've got a really uh, a really interesting story about piss. Actually, I've probably said it on a previous podcast. But in case anyone missed it, one of the first times that uh, I met Ben Mills, one of the first times, uh, my ex-girlfriend's parents were coming around to meet us for the first time, and his band left not a five his litre... for the first time. <laughs> me no, not me. Yeah. <laughs> Smoking Hearts came around, and uh, they met my ex-girlfriend for the first time, and then, uh, yeah, that was it. But yeah, he left a five litre bottle of travelling piss just on the top of my dustbin. And it was fucking disgusting, like me. a full five litres of piss. So it's not, they haven't even considered just emptying that out fag after a couple of it. pisses. It's fucking disgusting. I need a piss. Brilliant. That's unbelievable. 
Yeah, I definitely fact. have said that, told that story before. So Elvis is dead now, right? He's dead. Brown bread. Um, King Street. Or is he? So he died. Oh, he was addicted to, when he died, he was addicted to drugs. He was a diabetic and he was massively overweight. Yeah. He was lucky to not lose a foot. Yeah, in, in that aspect. Um, so many conspiracy theories. Uh, ben, do you want to do you want to take the lead with this? Uh, I can just imagine Elvis losing a foot. Sorry, the, the the thought of Elvis losing a foot is just reminding me. You know, when at school, <laughs> when you have them compasses to draw circles with, yeah. and it was really loose, and it'd be like, oh, and he slipped off, and yeah. it was like more of like a really long. I can just imagine Elvis playing guitar and like trying to do his hip gyration, but then just like, and just like spiraling off into control. Spinning into in a audience. circle. Out of control. El Elvis invented control. the stage dive, right? That's what happened. He, he <laughs> spun off and then, he was He was secretly a oh. diabetic and didn't want anyone to know that he'd lost a foot. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, or he didn't want to look like a human compass. Yeah. Elvis, Elvis, <laughs> once Elvis was dead, um, that, that's when the, the real conspiracies start or the, you know, like the, the faking of the own death and the reason why he uh, faked his own death, mm. um, possibly because he was in the army and then he went on to be a spy uh, and then he ended and made enemies with the mafia. That was one of the main ones. His dad actually sold he, one of his private jets to the, to the mafia and then the mafia ended up um, siphoning lots of money out of um, oh. Elvis's accounts. Uh, uh, but apparently Elvis wouldn't have known about that until uh, look, it, it happened. They found out like... And they did the sting operation on the mafia after it died, so they wouldn't have known about that. Apparently, um, oh, that's but, like rather that's got some like feet to it, though, man. Like that sounds quite convincing. Yep. <laughs> Unlike Elvis, it's got some feet to it. Sorry, I didn't do really... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Elvis collected statues of Venus de Milo and Joan of Arc. Very specific. He had some weird things, didn't he? As yeah. well, telling Priscilla to like, you should dress like this, dye your hair like me, get some teeth like me, move yeah. your hips like me. Weird guy. Um, also, he was obsessed with Masonic occult ritual books. Was he? Saying. He what? had a large collection, which is, which is currently on display at the Gettysburg Museum of History. Really? Um, Yes. Elvis, yes really. Elvis Presley. <laughs> Ev Getting Elvis further. Presley personally owned Masonic occult ritual books, uh, which are now in the Elvis Museum. Uh, and they are often on tour in the Gettysburg Museum of History. Um, yeah. That's crazy. I never knew that. It's Dude, also he is one a of bit of a mess. One of his personal uh, uh, Masonic occult books is in the Elvis Museum in Pigeon Ford in Tennessee. Um, he also had many different ver versions of the Old Testament and Masonic ritual books varying from the 19th century. Yeah. And the uh, the museum eventually went on to buy them. Really? Yeah. Gonna, so if, if, you're, uh, our... if you're in Gettysburg, go and check them out. They're just JFK books owned by episode. Elvis. Did you right. know that Elvis had a one-night stand with Marilyn Monroe in 1956? Go on, son. Go on, uh, according to uh, to associate Byron Raphael, the king later told him she's not a girl, but she's a little too tall for me. She was too. And she wasn't she's fourteen. So... She wasn't fourteen. Ah, uh, I mean a waist size, man. I mean a waist size. She's only right. seventeen. <laughs> so, uh, also <laughs> one that one. <laughs> <laughs> In uh, one of the one one that got me thinking, what J JJ uh, um, mentioned in the chat a while back was the fact that well, one that stood out that I kept seeing was everyone was like, he's in the background in Home Alone, yeah, like, at the um, airport. Now <laughs> you look at the image of the actor. Uh, we'll put it in the um, we'll put it in the Discord at some point. But there is, in fact, you look at the actor behind um, Kevin's mother in the scene in Home Alone where she's. Um, oh, I can't remember what, what the scene is exactly. Isn't she's she trying, trying to, to stop? To, uh, stop? Oh, yeah, she's trying back. to get back to Kevin, isn't she? Because yeah. uh, John Candy's in the background. But this guy that's in a suit with like a black turtleneck and like a beard and short, sort of like thin black, uh, thin brown hair on the top of his head. Yeah. He actually could be a does... bad guy in Die Hard. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's definitely trying to get definitely. back to his uh, facility to blow it up, isn't he? Let's be honest. Yeah. Does look like Elvis, though, doesn't he? Like, you look well, at Well, you... one... I was looking at this. Obviously, I shared it in the group there. I was yeah. looking at this, and I was just, like, thinking... First thing I thought was, like, Elvis had sex with a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> like, a lot of people. I'm pretty sure that guy... That guy in that picture looks way younger than Elvis would have been in Home Alone 2. Yeah, like, like that's obviously... That's, that's not a 60-year-old guy there. It's Home Alone 1, anyway. Yeah, it's Home Alone 1, yeah. Oh, a Home Alone yeah. 1. It's He's definitely not a 60-year-old bloke, that guy. So, yeah, Elvis would have Elvis been... Elvis would have been 60. 60, yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not Elvis. It's, there's a few others where there's pictures. <laughs> yeah. The, I just sent you guys one. Guy. So, the, have you seen the video of the groundskeeper guy? Yes, yes. So, he walks, walks past, like, the camera and he goes, which is the signs of life. Um, what stroking is so stroking so your two fingers down there is a sign sign of life thing. So, like, so for people listening, Ben's stroking his fingers down the side of his like eye and which cheek, is not, which is like apparently it's like it's saying like I'm getting signs of life, like it's the signal hand signal for that. So that's why people think that could be him going, I'm alive. I'm alive. So there's a video of a garden keeper at Graceland. Is that it's a greenskeeper? Sorry, yeah. at Graceland. Gr- groundskeeper, yeah, yeah. Which I oh, mean, gr- it looks like it, Ooh, Elvis. This, yeah, the, the, the main conspiracy to me sounds like this mob hit that you explained earlier, Ben, how he, they'd sold them a plane and they were <laughs> siphoning money and being a, yeah. a, a DEA bloody agent or something. But the, the wax dummy was buried in his coffin and yeah. and he's in so, witness protection. So, yeah, they, like, they reckon that um, at, his, at his funeral, not only was the colonel, his manager, acting strangely, his dad was acting pretty strangely as well. And there was it. They the coffin, which was made of copper, um, yeah, uh, was super heavy it was, or something. It was a wasn't struggle it? for men, nine men to carry. They struggled to carry it, and apparently it weighed nine hundred pounds. Fuck. But the maths doesn't add up on this. Okay, this is where it gets a bit like, what the, what the, what the beep is going on here? What the deuce? Here? What the deuce? Um, Elvis, at his time of death, weighed about two hundred and fifty pounds. A, the, co- the copper That's a big coffee, boy, man. at most weighed 200 pounds where is the other 400 pounds? yeah where what's going on with all these extra pounds in there yeah, where's the other four i heard that he was buried with a lot of things inside his coffin i'll try and bring up the article again but i it was said that he was buried the... with an air conditioning unit ah uh... <laughs> because it was made of wax and it wasn't really him and they were saying, or, didn't they... or it was just some sort of like ritual lift into the bunker with Michael Jackson. Yes. They so were... maybe he was actually in there and they were just like lowering him down to go live in that little pedo dungeon. So talking bunker of... dungeon so that talk... Ellen DeGeneres has keys to. So talking about the air conditioning that's <clears throat> allegedly inside the coffin, it was a conspiracy group called the Presley Commission that claimed that a wax dummy that appeared to be yeah. sweating was buried inside Presley's <laughs> coffin. The group oh, was convinced was the king was being hunted by the mafia and in, in order to escape, he chose to go to a to witness protection program. The commission said Presley's manager perished in the Graceland bathroom and the wax dummy in the coffin was kept cool through an elaborate ruse involving hidden fans and dry ice. Mm. <clears throat> well, they said Bullshit. that the body looked strange. It had smaller and smoother hands. Uh, the sideburns looked glued on and his nose was crooked. But... I think if he'd fallen off the toilet, he probably broke his nose, right? Well, exactly, yeah. And as it's got 200 pounds of force as well behind him, probably. Oh, no. Straight on the floor. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Little less conversation. Also, uh, where were the wires for this air conditioning unit? Were they powered by like those massive well, batteries the, that used to get in gallo blasters? Half of the coffin, right? Because that it was only the top half was covered. So yeah, but where were the wires? Well, you know, when office. these guys were carrying the coffin with a, just well, a trail of wires in, behind them, he pulled the cord out of the back, you know, like a the <clears> vacuum, <throat> like a vacuum cleaner. He pulled it out, of the <laughs> back. keep pulling it out, boys. <laughs> when they got to what, the thing, what happens in fucking funerals in America? Like, I'm sure the casket's open in the funeral yeah, have, and then they fucking no, take it, it, it and then drop it. Cover. it they, don't, just, they don't bury it fucking open, do they? No, they, no, they, have, they have a lot of open caskets over here. Nah, yeah. that's that's weird, man. Weird, it's a big stupid, it's a massive casket thing. Yeah, no, not the open casket thing. That's fine, but the fucking this theory is nah. Nah, it is. It's nah. yeah, it's nah. not working for me. Oh, I don't know. Nah. I the the idea of him having to escape the mafia is I can get behind that. Like there's there's feet to it, lol. Um but especially yeah. if he's a little snitch. 
a lot of drugs. No, I mean, what, what I get from it is Elvis was a fucking snitch, and you know what snitches get? But, snitches. Right. Oh, okay. So there's mm. another. Here we go. Debunk this one straight away. The most famous guy in the world gets in cahoots with the president, and the president goes, "Look, if you infiltrate these fucking mafia guys, I'll give you what? what what's he gonna? What's the president gonna be able to give him He'll that he doesn't already have? Because he, I reckon, so get out for what? Get out of like because his manager just signed. Get out of non scale gigs a year at Vegas in Vegas. Oh, you're so you're saying it's a social thing? He's just like, oh, I don't want to play gigs anymore, so I'm just yeah. gonna pretend I'm a wax dummy to get yeah. away from the. No, he didn't pretend yeah. he was a wax dummy. He got a wax dummy to pretend he <laughs> was him. Just covered himself in butter and then yeah. made this fucking elaborate. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm actually a wax dummy, yo. Nobody will be able to tell. Just cover me in butter. <laughs> Just come over, cover me in mar- margarine. I love the stuff. It's co- all my arteries are covered in it. I love it. <laughs> just put a fan in there. It just throws in a little girl. No, 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 not an actual fan, a real <laughs> fan, an extractor fan. Hold on, wait. How old are you, sweetheart? No, not her. Come on, let's move away. You look, you look seventeen years old. Get out of yeah. my coffin. So apparently, um, like, that's why it was so heavy. It was um, another yeah, person in the there. morning of the morning of his death, a black helicopter was seen flying out of the grounds oh, of Graceland. God. Yeah, this is one that. So, but there was a picture. There was a picture that proved that. But after a lot of like internet sleuthing and uh, you know pictures like of Graceland at the time and Graceland now, it was proven that the picture couldn't have been from them because the. The bushes were a lot higher to yeah for Elvis's privacy, so it couldn't have been taken at the time. Yeah, also, it was no one, no one ever like that. It was just a rumor. It was never corroborated. And they they've never got any any witness statements saying this thing. Yeah. So the the thing behind that was many conspiracy theorists believe Presley wanted to live a life away from the spotlight, and the only way he could do that was by obviously faking his own death. And their proof was like not long not long before his corpse was found in Graceland, a black helicopter arrived on his property. Uh, Presley, Presley allegedly got on board and travelled to Bermuda, where he was never heard from again. Like, how do they know Bermuda as well? Just like I mean, one of the other things with this is that there's a high probability that that possibly could have been an ambulance because they don't release the deaths of famous people for a long time after the till after they've died. Right. So like the one whoever found him didn't go. Ring the press, Elvis is dead. She probably went, I should probably ring an ambulance and then rang the ambulance. Elvis dead at the scene um, and the time of death was 3 p.m., but it was probably more likely to die between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. Yeah, but and they also still send an ambulance also, regardless of whether you're dead or not. Isn't, they didn't, there was no helicopter. It was just like nah. rumor. Nah. But another nah, right. man witnessed Elvis buying a ticket to Argentina the day of his death giving the name John Burroughs, which is the name that Elvis used to use to check into hotels. Oh. Sorry, repeat that one. Sorry, stop. A man witnessed Elvis buying a ticket to Argentina on the day of he was supposed to have died, giving the name John Burroughs, which was the name he used to check into hotels, like his pseudonym. What is it about Argentina and people trying to fake their own deaths? Yeah, and get, but like... <laughs> I'm going to debunk that instantly. Okay. At the time... Memphis, there, there wasn't any international flights out of Memphis. Oh, there you go. That's fucking easily, yeah, easily done that one. Which is a shame because that's kind of an interesting one that, like, but, could make sense. Yeah, but it, it couldn't have happened. They didn't have <laughs> so, <laughs> another, I want JJ Unless to talk about this. Flight. Um, sorry? <laughs> Unless you've got a connecting flight. Ah, there's that. Ah, so you can ah. go to Argentina and go, um, so you're going to have to fly to I, Chicago and then you can. I can't do that. I mean, uh, I can't do that. Oh, I know there's no way that you can. I know there's no way that you can share this picture, but in in all these conspiracy theories, because there's a lot of them, um, I found this picture. Um, if you can put it up on the feed, if not, maybe share a link of it in the thing. But all the conspiracy theory pictures are all of just like Elvis doing what he did, and then there's one here that says Elvis killed himself, and he looks so smarmy about it. Him in the picture, <laughs> yeah, yeah he's just like. That. Yeah, I did. I'll fucking kill myself. No, you fucking idiots doing these stupid podcasts like 40 years later. (laughs) Silly pricks. So he's actually like, I fucking did it. 350 pounds when he died. That's what a lot of people. He weighed 250. So another one that this get this is people that 
with celebrities when they're just like, oh, this is him in a picture and he turned up at his own like funeral or something yeah. like that or a celebration. They said that with Michael Jackson at the funeral. There was some nah. person oh, there. And we'll go they've Jamie also Jackson. said it with like Tupac and it was an incident where like he was allegedly seen at some something with Suge Knight on an island or something like that. Yeah. And now this one where um, he went Suge. to a Graceland uh, jury, he went to Graceland during a birthday tribute and it's just this whacking great guy with like, you know, I don't know, in 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 a matching jacket. It looks, you... like, it looks like Father Christmas cosplaying as a sheriff. Yeah, that's that's a, yeah. It does. He does exactly like that. Well, literally yeah. everybody, anybody who's been in the police forces in America who's retired looks like that. Yeah, I went to Mexico, and every single person who was in our hotel looked like that. And when, they fucking hated me. We, we, we'll put the link of the page that we're looking at for this information, and you can see the pictures that we're also talking about. But I do not see Elvis in this I fat do. guy. How? I like, see Elvis, mate. I see Elvis, I see Elvis everywhere if, if, I look on the face of If every anybody's time. photoshopped in that picture, it's the fucking woman next to her in the, the fucking left, in the, the Parker jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it literally, literally looked like someone has photoshopped her face oh, straight into that Parker jacket. Her face jacket. is just like in the bottom right hand corner. It just don't look right. Or maybe that's it? fucking Elvis. Maybe that's who <laughs> we're meant to think is Elvis. We're all like, oh, look at that bearded bloke. No, nah, it's the woman in the park. There is, there's a Facebook group called Elvis Presley is Alive, yeah, and they published this the photo group. that irrefutably proved that the king was still walking this earth. The image was reportedly taken during a birthday tribute at Graceland. In the photos, a man is perpetuated to be Elvis, sporting a white beard and a moustache, uh, wears a black jacket and a baseball cap yeah. that also yeah. looks like every other uncle that you see here in America. He just looks like an American, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. This looks um, like an American. Um, maybe we should go into the more weird, the weird mythical side of it now, because there's quite a few things to do with spirituality, can I just, which okay, then leads on can from I just, what I think Dean was about to say about a film that we more, fucking love. One more guy, one more conspiracy that they think is Elvis carried on. Go on him. Uh, Bob, jo Bob Joyce. Ah, yes, yeah. Which, mate, he sat like, if you listen to the guy sing, mate, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It could be him, man. Yeah, and a lot of people are say that like, it's absolutely him, isn't he? Uh, he's a, a church pastor as well, yeah, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. But I think it's been proven that he isn't obviously Elvis. I mean, to be honest, you look at him as well, you can kind of see he's... The guy in the Home Alone picture looks more like Elvis than this yeah, guy Yeah, he's does. also 20 years too. Mate, Bob Joyce, man, he could be Elvis. Do you think? I don't yeah, think so. a little bit so. of plastic surgery. A like, little bit of conversation. Little boy, I think he... Mate, he could be. I think he's had his nose done. If anything, if he would have had his nose done to kind of like... To like go like I've got to have a little bit changed about me, but he smiled. Did you know that the guy. Um, the guy who played Biff Tannen in Back to the Future Two, well, he played him in both of them. He based yeah. his character in the future on Elvis Presley. Really? Really? Sick. No, yeah. what? I, I Two thought he flies based it with the same gun. <laughs> yeah. I always thought the persona was Trump, but I guess obviously well, I think, not. Yeah, I think he was a bit. So Trump. the the concept of him was meant to be like Trump. Yeah, uh, but he based his character cap characteristics of like what he thought he Elvis, Elvis Presley would be yeah, like. Yeah, was in his like arsehole era. I might have drawn that. Let me just double, let me just fact check that. I'm pretty sure he did. I can't remember the well, actor's no, name. Ben but... quoted something. Leave it with me. Ben quoted Leave something me. that sounds... Flies with the same gun. The um, same gun. I guess it's poetic justice. <laughs> because I mean, it makes, it makes sense. It makes sense because he was trying to like make his wife something that she wasn't and yeah. things like that to try and bring yeah. her up to the you know, and I mean, again, that, that's just a manipulative man in general, big, isn't it? Really, big but... top floor of the tower that he owned, top floor yeah. apartment, and he's in the hot tub. Yeah, and and he's got a wet remote control in the end with all them CRT TVs. Yeah. <laughs> which is hilarious. It's the future, and they're just like this big. Yeah, and loads of little <laughs> about that deep. Scart, scart powered, like scart cords <laughs> everywhere in the back. All that, all that electrics in that one one point of his building it must be a danger hazard. Like, he needs a better electrician. <laughs> that close to the hot tub. Yeah. Especially with uh, people just coming in and throwing remote controls and splashing everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so what's these occult uh, yeah, or on, this is, spiritual this sort of things? Stuff. Yeah. So apparently he was really into, um, like, Western spirituality. Oh, sorry, Eastern spirituality. Um massively obsessed with um let me just get this right because 
I'm reading an article here. It was how Eastern spirituality affected Elvis Presley. Uh, bearing in mind, Priscilla has written all this, so it could be another uh, kind of Courtney Love kind of vibe, so yeah. I don't know. But um, he said he had a fascination with spirituality. She mentioned the king of rock and roll was reading many spiritual texts. He sought spirituality as a way of understanding why he was so successful, so a bit of a God complex, and why he was still dissatisfied with life. As, Elvis as Elvis's fascination with the occult and metaphysical phenomena intensified, Larry introduced him to a self-realization fellowship center on Mount Washington, where he met the Dia Mater, the head of the center. She, Priscilla wrote that she epitomized everything she, he was striving to be. So almost like he's having a, a rebirth. So he was ashamed right. of the person who he'd yeah. become. Yes. Um, so that and uh, according to Priscilla, Mater resembled Elvis's mother, Gladys, who he was obsessed with. Huh. Um, he made several trips to Mount Washington, high in the Hollywood Hills for sessions. Again, high in the Hollywood Hills screams to me, pyramid scheme. Mm. Like it's just somebody a bit like the fucking, that dude who the Beatles was hanging around with and all that shit. Yeah. Um, so, do you know what this actually ties but, in with what he thought about, where, about the time towards the end of his death, he started talking about his brother, his twin brother died at birth. Right. He started talking about him in like, he, like he lives with me. Like he, he, um, he was what was his brother called? Jesse. Jesse lives with me. Jesse lives with me. And he would have dreams about him and Jesse sharing the stage as both like performing, like, and they would like, I never do this in blue lights and stuff. Yeah. And he would talk about it quite so, a lot. If I, I know that this is a different person, this is obviously about Johnny Cash, but if anyone's watched Dewey Cox walk hard, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of scenes in that that scream to me where he just like sees his brother who is like his dad loved and he got, he was hated by his dad. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it screams to me brother, like, doesn't yeah. And then like when he's playing at the end and he looks to the left and he's on the stage next to him, like dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just say that? A, that film is so fucking it's underrated. Fucking brilliant. So it's so such a good film. Fucking good. And the drug sequences where he's like, you don't want to do this, do we? Oh yeah. This yeah, is yeah. cocaine. Is there <laughs> any hangover? No. Does it give, uh, yeah. Does it make you feel sick? No. It makes you hungry. Does it make you want to have sex? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that guy, that guy, that guy, he's the guy who plays Tony, the manager in Pop Star Never Stop Stopping as well. I he's need to so see good. that movie. I haven't hey, seen that's that the, yet. It's the best musical ever. Oh, I've got to check that out. It's not really sure. a musical either. But it's not even a musical. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of music. It would be fucking brilliant as a musical. It is basically a musical though, because he does bust it into a lot of songs. Mona Lisa. You're an overrated piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if it's meant if you mentioned this, Ben, already, but Elvis's dad apparently felt that the uh, the birth of Elvis Presley was uh, mystical, and really? lots of unusual that. things happened when he was born. Just this is in reference to his brother. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to find the thing where it said about his brother there, but. Yeah, sorry, carry on anyway. But yeah, he his dad thought that his birth... But then again, it's easy in retrospect to be like, I knew my son was special when he becomes special. No one yeah, ever goes, yeah, I knew yeah. my son was going to be a down-and-out druggie, did they? Like, I'm not yeah. saying Elvis was, I'm just saying, like, no one ever brags yeah. about their shitty son. They only brag about yeah. their yeah. good son. Well, and it was the re yeah, they were the reason why they became brilliant. Well, I had a vision. I mean, he was technically, they were. But... Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. had a vision my daughter would cure cancer, but now she's just doing OnlyFans. You know, you don't get them types, do you? She's spreading her butt. <laughs> well, do you know, um, so Lisa Marie, or was it Lisa Marie? Yeah, Lisa Marie um, was sitting on the couch with Oprah Winfrey, in, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey in 2005, which actually, I also have a very funny meme about Oprah Winfrey that I will say after this. <laughs> so, Oprah Winfrey was, so we won't have to edit it and bleep it out like mine. So Oprah Winfrey uh, was sitting on the couch with Lisa Marie and she was talking about her dad, and she said, he too grew up poor. And that's exactly what he said the other day. Ah! And she said, so. Ah! Yeah, I've got her. another one there for that. Um, let me just go back a page or two. Also, uh, Oprah Winfrey looks like Ian Wright in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this. <laughs> the, <laughs> right, the, the thing that I watched was almost <laughs> like, it was almost like those gifts uh, in the era of like stick death. It was a picture of Oprah Winfrey and a picture of Ian Wright. And all it was was back and forward was just Oprah Winfrey's hair. No, it just kept going like this. So someone had photoshopped 
Oprah Winfrey balls, and then this wig just kept going across and bouncing back and forth. All I can think about, I'm oh, sorry, all I can think about oh, is that what? clip with Ian Wright where he sees his old PE teacher. Oh, I thought crying. you were dead. That's Oprah seeing Elvis. I thought you were dead. So, <laughs> along with this one, along with what Ben just said, 28 years after oh. his passing, Priscilla Presley let it slip that she recently spoke to him. Um, many, many believe Presley is still alive because his ex-wife, Priscilla Presley, oh, I'm guessing this is exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it must be. But it was it was Pris- it was Priscilla Presley. No, it was Lisa Marie on the sofa. Oh well, it says here it might not be her. Oh, it does oh, say up. Well, Oprah- yeah, it says oh, here no, it says many. Said, pe- she was she was on the couch with Lisa Marie when she said sorry. Yeah. Ah right, yeah, because it says inadvertently told a talk show host in two thousand and five that she had recently had a conversation with him and let it slip that she spoke to him while being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. She was sitting on the couch with her daughter Lisa Marie, and he said, "Yeah, so yeah, that was what I thought." So hang on, I'm confused. It was the one who was married to Michael Jackson. Lisa, Lisa Marie. Marie. Ah, the door, the door another okay. nonce. Yeah, and apparently we haven't spoke about it, but one of the theories is that he went to live in a bunker with Michael Jackson. Yeah, come yeah, what, what? Like, like, well, pardon. Michael Jackson went to live with him because obviously King was there. Yeah, already. Of course, of course, the, of course the source is a uh, Daily Mail article as well. <laughs> Don't we use the Daily Mail as all the sources of our information? Yeah, true. In 2019, the Daily Mail reported... If we didn't. They they reported that (laughs) the website claimed Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson were living together in a bunker. The website perpetuated... uh, What's it? The website purported, surely you've heard the secret, seven-story deep bunker that Elvis Presley had built underneath Graceland prior to faking his own death. MJ lives there now with Elvis and certain other dead celebrities. You don't have to be sad for uh-huh. him anymore. The bunker was uh-huh. supposedly underneath Graceland, Presley's former home. That's fucking brilliant. You know what, though? Like, it it's surprising that somebody hasn't set up an institute for uh, child stars or rich yeah, people or famous it. people where they can just go to, apart from, obviously, uh, Bohemian Grove, but they just go there and fuck young boys, but like they come back and no one knows about it. But like, I'm surprised no one has created one. And if they have created one, it probably wouldn't be public. So, I mean, it would make sense that there was a place where people were just like, I'm fucking sick of this. Yeah, you know, yeah, it went, you know, like I would, like if you were. That's where we've been for six months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause our bands were so big. We no, just couldn't walk the down the street anymore. This podcast is bigger than any bands we've ever done or ever will do. Except for Slayback. I just like the it's fact that uh, Ben's, ben, Ben's room almost does look like a padded cell that he's been there so long that he's decorated yeah. it himself. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's almost Bloody. like a Jamiroquai video or a uh, reef. Yeah. Reef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> reef video. <laughs> <laughs> no, play it, oh, da. <laughs> oh, play it, oh. All, all that reminds me oh, of is the brush. Oh, play it, oh, da. Oh, play it, oh, da. Just search, oh, place oh, your hands. hands. Search, oh, place your hands by Reef, and then you will hear what we just did pretty much exactly <laughs> the same. It's gibberish. Has anyone ever seen pictures of Reef recently? No. They just played South oh Bend, my like. god! They literally look like they've just lived in the sea for <laughs> the last uh, twenty years. Oh, well, I'm such an idiot. I just googled Reef 2022. <laughs> I've got a load of coral reefs. Yeah, loads of dead coral reefs, mate. <laughs> reef are dying, man. The reefs dying, man. Oh, yeah, Colorless do. reefs, Cross. man. One yeah, of them well, looks that's like. That's, I mean, that's an episode for another. The episode. lead singer looks like he hasn't brushed his hair since that song came out. I was going to say, one of them oh, looks like Rob Zombie. <laughs> you know, like, oh, you know, mop heads, mop heads of mops. You know, yeah. they never grow any longer or get any shorter unless you cut them. He, it, look, <laughs> it looks like his hair is a mop that's just carried on growing. <laughs> if it's, is, yeah. They don't look And they're good. literally living on that one song. They played like some Scarborough festival the other week and I was like, they play anything good. They were like, no, they played that song I'm like, like three, right, cool. three times and left. Do you want to hear well, it you again? Had to, you had no. to wait 45 yes, minutes. Play the same song again. That's it. Play the song the same again. Don't play it on Oh, my God. My dog's in the other room thinking, what the fuck's going on in there? Yeah. Um, so- <laughs> I was like, 
what is Daddy doing? <laughs> what is Daddy so, doing in there? So um, we could probably confirm. Um, well, let's talk about some of the other people that claimed that Elvis was alive or they were Elvis, including Orion. Who? Orion. Orion? So Orion was a masked singer who claimed to be Elvis. Um, yeah, he claimed to be Elvis. Orion, masked Orion, singer. I did Jimmy not Ellis. come across Jimmy this. Ellis in the end, it wasn't actually him. Our oh, name's Jimmy Ellis. Oh, look. Oh, my dear God. But there's a documentary about it, The Man Who Would Be King, and I've not seen it. I wish I'd seen it now because it would have been perfect. I mean, it's probably available shit, somewhere. Show. <laughs> it just looks it just every time I see Elvis now, though, all I think of is Bruce Campbell. I just can't help it. Yeah. It just looks like there's Bruce another, Campbell. There's in the another mask. theory. That is. That's so when problem. I was talking about the Institute for people, places that uh, celebrities would go. You, you, what's that fucking clinic where everyone goes? Is it the Mary Ford Clinic or yeah. some Ford yeah, Clinic yeah. where everyone who's got addictions goes to? Obviously, I'll let Dean explain this, the plot line of Bubba Hotep because it's been a while since I watched it. But <laughs> and that, everyone that knows is, them of you. That it's is a, a brilliant film. It's a great that, movie. That is, not a lot of people will have seen that film because I remember no, when I, I used to work at Virgin Megastars this is how fucking underrated this film is. As every chronicle of Faces of Death was there. Yep. In, you know, just, I don't know if anyone remembers Faces of yeah, Death. It was yeah. basically yeah. a DVD. I don't know why I have to do this to show the size of a DVD to people who don't know what a fucking DVD is. <laughs> I mean, it's, there's a probability that there's somebody watching who doesn't know what a DVD is. That's scary. <laughs> but they were just like, they had a skull on. The graphic designer was Faces of Death 1 and it had one skull on. And then Faces of Death 2 had two skulls on. But I don't think the graphic I designer ever got bored. Of, like, <laughs> literally, I remember seeing Faces of Death 17, and I'm pretty sure there was only like 14 skulls on it because the graphic designer didn't even Slipped up. didn't even shrink them down. What anyway, there was all the Faces of Death films for like two pounds. I was like five for a fucking quid or whatever. Yeah. And then Bubba Hotep was in there, and I was like, that looks like shit. And then my mate, who was also a collector of Faces of Death, was like, I've seen Bubba Hotep. And I'm guaranteed that he would have only ever seen Bubba Hotep because he picked up those Faces of Death films. Uh -huh. Because he, I was just like, never it's, heard of it. And it's and that I, much of I an underrated movie. I watched it about 10 times. So, so if, good. But I'll let, any, I'll let Dean explain yeah, that. If my anybody story, my, my story of how I saw that film was pretty much the same. It yeah, was if, if nobody is twenty or something at HMV. If, yeah. yeah, if nobody has seen or heard it, I heard I come across it when I was working in London and I saw an actual poster for it on the underground. But it's a movie starring the most amazing man on the planet and actor Bruce Campbell. He plays a um, well, he plays Elvis and an Elvis impersonator who is a uh, I can't remember the name of the impersonator particularly, but I'll probably get it in uh, like two seconds. Um, this is Bruce Campbell from The Evil Dead, not Bruce yeah, Campbell. Yeah, Bruce Campbell from, from The Evil Dead. So Elvis... I am Braden. That's Bruce yeah. Dickinson. <laughs> Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> he plays uh, Sebastian Haff. Sebastian Haff, Haff, that's it. So Bruce Campbell is, a, is an impersonator called Sebastian Haff. And Elvis, also played by Bruce Campbell, approaches America's best impersonator and says to him, I want to escape the stardom. Do you want my life? To which obviously Sebastian Haff's like, yeah, absolutely. They write a contract. So Elvis is like, if at any point I want to return to my own life, I can breach this contract at any point. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. So Sebastian Half goes off and be continues being Elvis, the actual Elvis, whereas the real Elvis then takes on the role of Sebastian Half, this impersonator that's just a middle of the road guy that lives in a trailer park, uh, loses the contract in a barbecue, freak barbecue explosion. <laughs> and um, ends up in an old people's home where he's telling everybody he's Elvis. Obviously, no one believes him because they think he's an old crank. Uh, the main gist of the story, so that's obviously how he's in an old people's home. The main gist of the story is um, a museum is transporting the coffin of a an Egyptian uh, deity or something like this, or an Egyptian, a cursed Egyptian king who... Baba Hotep called Baba Hotep, whose cough, coffin or sarcophagus ends up in the river outside. The, the van crashes, coffin ends up in the river, and this demonic entity walks out of the river every now and again, and goes into the old people's home, sucks the soul out of the old people through their anus, so he continues to live and then goes back to the river. And it's up to Sebastian or Elvis Presley and uh, a dude... <laughs> 
I can't remember Jack his Kennedy. name. Hold on. Uh, just just before we go too far, the reason <laughs> the reason Bobby why Davis. it's called Bubba Bubba Hotep is because Bubba is a a sl- slang term for somebody who's like South American, a good old boy. But the mummy actually wears a cowboy hat and cowboy boots, which yes, is yes, I forgot that. fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah. But you don't, yeah, but you don't even you don't even realize like the most of the time because it's such a dark film. Like, yeah, it you, goes. You I'm pretty sure you don't it. find out about this mummy until about halfway through the fucking it's film, like dawn, and then all of a sudden you're yeah. just like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's so like Dustal Dawn with it in that sense that like the it, the plot of the it film it doesn't just turns on its head play until like halfway, halfway through. through. Yeah. It's almost and, like they sack the writer halfway through and they're like, shit, how do we yeah. finish this? And the, the camera guy's just like, well, I've got this good idea about a mummy. And they're yeah, like, it's like, sounds great, it's like let's two, do it. It's like two scripts just like fell together, basically. So and you've fucking got good. his best friend uh, in the old people's home is Ozzy Davis. And if you know the actor, he's a black dude. <laughs> he thinks he's John F. Kennedy. <laughs> yeah, he, is, he is only John F. Kennedy in the whole thing. He's called Jack. Yeah, it that's John it. John F. Kennedy for the whole thing. That is his name in the show. Like, there's yeah. no alias. Like, and <laughs> if nobody has seen the movie, don't get me wrong, it's a B-movie, but it is possibly the best depiction of Elvis on screen in a movie. Bruce Campbell plays Elvis flawlessly. Like, it, he it's could... like a biopic, because he's, he's, narrating, he's narrating it himself. So it's almost like you, he's... He's narrating the fact that he's already dead, mm. but he's almost yeah. like living dead because he's just like he, he talks about himself in a way that he's like, I'm in this old people's home. I'm, I just want to die. I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, I've got this awful. What does he say? I've got this awful boil on my. I got on my rear, awful, awful, my... awful boil on my pecker that has to be oiled yeah. by a nurse. <laughs> every and it's just yeah, a nurse that just has to toss him off or like wait. She has to she has to lather his dick. Yeah, <laughs> like every like, morning. To get the gunk out. Oh, it's so. <laughs> it's just so sat there, good. so degraded. Yeah, it's such a good movie, and it's six point nine out of ten on IMDb. Which and I always have a rule that, that if so it's good. seven out of ten, it's worth seeing. So just excuse that point one and go and see it because Hands down one of the weirdest best films you'll ever. Watch. It is. It's so and good. It's a great like. It's it's not far off the conspiracy theories anyway. So it's kind of like. It's believable to an extent. It's, it's there's more. Much, there's more belief in this movie than there is in half of the fucking conspiracies that are re- yeah. related to this topic, man. Like I would believe so imme- that. Sorry, immediately as soon as you said it's got six point nine out of ten, I just was like straight away IMDb. Not checking what you said. I was just interested to see how many stars Faces of Death got. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just looking at all the Faces of Death films, and it's hard to believe. That the first Faces of Death film was 1978. Fucking hell. No, that does, yeah. Wow. Fake as well, weren't they? Yeah, that most of them were fake. With the monkey head and the brains coming out was fake. Do you remember the one, again, it's off topic, but do you remember the one that was like, it was just a guy filming a building in like Asia. And then this fucking jazz beat comes in. It's just like, and then you just hear a guy go, one, two, three, four. And then his body just hits a car. And then the guy just goes over and films it. And the body's like, arms are hanging off and stuff. And it's just like lying on this thing. Oh, and he goes right up to it and it's haunting. Like, oh, absolutely. I've, I've but it's just the, it's the, oh my God. There's one, right, where a guy goes, to, goes in this fucking swamp. Because this kid's fallen in this swamp. And this brave sheriff grabs the kid out and like throws him on land. And then as he's coming away, this alligator eats him or bites him and pulls him in. And then the best part about it is, from what I remember, probably not what happened, mm. but you just see the sheriff's hat floating on the water. <laughs> and then this all- and then this alligator's head pops up. And I'm almost certain that the sheriff's hat's on the alligator's head. I'm sure the guy films it and it's just like, <laughs> well, hello but there, I'm already. your sheriff. <laughs> and you look at like, back definitely then, didn't probably, happen. Back then you'd be horrified, but then you look back at it now and then you're just like, eh, they were playing it's up just, to it. It's almost like, almost like Rob Zombie's first ever films, the way that they are. Like, yeah. they're so like weird and like, there's loads of like weird neon lights everywhere. And then all of a sudden there's just this great scene where there's this guy in a gas chamber and this guy narrating it like, this is so-and-so, so-and-so. He was found stealing a loaf of bread. So they sentenced him to death by gas. And he's just like this. <laughs> like, const- just like gasping for air. <laughs> And it's haunting. And we, me and my mates used to just watch it on repeat. Yeah, I like, remember watching it's it. Fucking, yeah, faces it's of fucking death. Awful. As a kid, before the internet and knowing that most of it isn't real, 
it's fucking scarring, dude. Like a lot of it is yeah. really like. But now you look at it, and like for instance, that monkey scene where they open the monkey's head with like the, the little mallets and stuff. You look back and you're like, that temple cle of clearly the brain is like pieces of like uh, dipped uh, pieces of beef, like sort of dipped in red yeah, and shit. Brains like wouldn't that. have that consistency, would it? So oh, well, exactly. so it is a mockumentary. It All these years, I was yeah. just like, it's a mockumentary, wow. yeah. It's not really before what the internet, a strange before thing to make. Yeah. Well, well, it made but... fucking fortunes though, right? So, boys, I guess... Well, not, wrap... not really. A one pound of fucking DVD. Yeah, it probably costs right. 90p to fucking make them. Faces of Death. Right, so... It's a, it's a Mondo horror film written and directed by John Allen Swartz, credit under the pseudonyms Conan Leclerc and Alan Black, respectively. Uh, I mean, I used to it I used to sell... I used right, to sell makes... these in duplicates. Like, people Episode would buy... One. The, multiple of them the first video budget four hundred fifty thousand dollars guess how much it's made in money uh it only cost four hundred fifty thousand dollars you said mate it did come out 50 made. years ago for 35 million dollars <laughs> wow <laughs> that is a massive massive percentage that is, that like... is 35 million dvds <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's bananas man yeah yeah Crazy. well i've never seen it and I'm, I'm probably not going to watch it's, it. It's no, he was going to say it's, it's Maybe not. We'll no, I know it's fake. It's, I'm good. Maybe we'll do a watch along. Yeah, we, and we can we laugh at how poor the editing and graphics are and stuff. Well, well, I thought it was real. So, I mean, huh? yeah. You're about to wrap up, weren't you? Oh, I was going to say so, like, what's our opinions on Elvis? Is he dead? Is he with the aliens? I, I, the groundskeeper kind of gets me going, like, it might be him. So I, I, I think he's dead, but the only- I think he's dead now. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think he's dead really, and he did die, but the one conspiracy that really has feet funny- I oh, think I've got the uh, same one as you. It's the underground bunker with Michael Jackson. It is, no, it's the whole mafia setup. Yeah. Like that whole thing. That to me, that sounds convincing enough. Well, his dad. So what? what yeah. What? Them, so. What is the? What is the reason though? Because obviously the JFK thing. Uh, sorry, the Nixon thing was like he was. The story that me and Ben were talking about was that he was employed to infiltrate the mafia, and then they found out that he was a little uh, sneak or whatever. Yeah. But and that's what is there actually a proper narrative to it? Is there a real narrative to it, or is it? Is that I, it? I think that's pretty much it, mate. Like, apparently he was, um, he kind of, his dad had um, done some business dealings with them to buy a plane, to sell his plane to them. And from that, he got connections to the mafia. And then from that, he was selling information to the. Yeah. To so the, uh, I, th I think he probably just like got on the wrong side of Joe Pesci. So the Joe Pesci just like <laughs> stabbed him with his fucking Joe Pesci blue tweed shoes. <laughs> So the Stop small, them. well, the small, you've, you've seen Goodfellas. He's a right little bastard in that when he's eleven. The, so, so the, the the thing behind the idea of the mob ordering a hit on him was actress Susanna Lee uh, starred alongside Presley in Paradise Hawaiian Style. She heard many conspiracy theories surrounding Presley's passing, many of which indicated he'd been slain. Prior to his demise, Presley was allegedly involved in an FBI investigation and given the code name Fountain Pen. The case involved billions of dollars, and it's another name for his penis, basically, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. They yeah, call the it a fountain pen. Yeah. My dick makes contracts. Uh, Constantly spilling the, out ink. The, oh, octopus. Uh, the case involved <laughs> oh, billions God. of dollars and organised crime, and Presley was allegedly an unwitting ver victim of the scheme. Uh, the singer was expected to provide some evidence in the case before passing. According to Lee, the FBI was tasked to make sure Presley was safe. Some believe the circumstances surrounding his demise were suspect. A member of Presley's security detail and a former police sergeant named Dick Grob, lol, uh, was convinced Dick the Grob. mob. Yeah, Dick Grob was convinced Dick the Grob mob, from the mob. <laughs> he was convinced the mob ordered a hit on Presley because they were afraid of the evidence Presley would reveal in court. Grob believed someone inside Presley's inner circle let the individual responsible for his passing into the house. So. I feel like, and like Ben said, the financial in implications with his dad and that he was making bad business deals, that to me tells, I don't know, I feel like that that's got some weight to it. However, I do think he's dead. I do think he just couldn't shit, had a heart attack, <laughs> fell flat on his face, vomed, ginger old and fanned him. 
oh my god and then just took his money and left or whatever you know he's- one thing we haven't mentioned is the fact that he used to live on which is another fucking crazy thing don't know whether it's true apparently one of his last meals was a squirrel burger with peanut butter so he he would eat squirrel burgers and i'm just like because apparently it reminded him of his childhood or reminded him of him of home but i'm like would a multi-millionaire? I mean, I don't know if it was. I'm presuming it was millions, but yeah, yeah, like, yeah. would a multi would a multi-millionaire still eat squirrel? So was, and would I it be a rare would, breed though. of squirrel? So That's I wild. still love love a kebab. Yeah, I get, like chicken donut all day long. I, mm. but I can you know I'd I mean I can make I can cook a lot better than that, and you know there's better food in the supermarket than that, but I love it. Like it's got a you know, mm. yeah. So, uh, yeah. But the the burgers. I know we haven't really mentioned the burgers that we'd eat, but man, they sound amazing. Peanut butter, mm. bacon. Jam. I don't know peanut butter. It's fucking what? Vile. squirrel. Nah, peanut butter makes me rich, dude. Can't do that. Can't do that. I thought shit. that's all Americans eat. Oh man, I hate. So you just get get up in the morning, just stick your fingers in a jar of. Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Skippy peanut no, butter. No, but he's he. Luckily, Dean hasn't assimilated that much into American life, where he's still. No. Quite slight in stature. He did say yeah. vacation though, so we'll we'll take one point off. He also Dean says that. Uh, elevator. <laughs> I did, uh, did I say elevator? No, I um, also, no, one I said thing vacation, I found out recently um, that you guys now use the term roundabout. Elon Musk used the term roundabout the other day. Yeah, but when we were in America right. touring, it was just at the next turnstile, and everyone was like, "What's that?" And then we found it a very small roundabout. We have to go around it the other way around. My, yeah. my Tesla still doesn't know how to do a roundabout. It just really beats itself and just breaks. So that that's what Elon Musk was saying. Elon Musk was saying that they're now integrating turnstiles into uh, wow. FED, whatever it's called, FDA fucking well, sat nav or whatever. That's a, a digression. Um, but I'd first, <laughs> before we wrap this up, I'd like to say thank you so much for your patience. Nathan. Yes, everybody. Uh, the pa- patience of everyone has been good. I'm it wasn't as long as I, Titanic. I am going to book in, I think, two weeks' time. Yes. We should. We so, uh, three months' time, we'll be. <laughs> <laughs> no, two weeks' time, that'd be the f- Sunday the 3rd. No, okay. I can't do Sunday the 3rd. Of December. Of July. I can't do that one, but I can do the following on the tenth. Yeah, we'll see, we'll we'll, we'll we'll see what the dates are. We are going to make sure you get at least an episode a month. Like yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, so it is. I've got a little bit more free time that I can work with. So, DB Cooper next, guys. I'd like to do that most definitely because it's interesting, mysterious, and I think there could be a lot behind it. Yeah, you know? and uh, yeah. And uh, but yeah, uh, make sure you listen to my new podcast. We need to talk about uh, shameless we've plug episodes about <laughs> pets and ghosts so far. With a new episode about magicians coming out on Wednesday, uh, <laughs> but it'll be out by the time you hear this podcast. <laughs> Did you get our boy on? What? Did you get our man on? What do you mean, man? Uh, fuck. The oh um, Huxley, oh. no Huxley, oh, yeah. Huxley Sorry, Huxley has been mentioned in the in the podcast. Um, but thank you for continuing to be patrons. There's a few of you still out there. Um, you'll get this episode early. Thank you for continuing to chat on the Discord. Like it, it's still amazing. Um, and you guys are still. It's hilarious. It's eight. I didn't. Op- I haven't opened that Discord group in so long, and I had something like seven hundred and ninety messages to go through, and I was like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to read all these, but it's fucking ass that people are still talking about it. Yeah, so hopefully that will reignite the flame. This will reignite the flame for all of you. Yeah. Um, We really appreciate everything. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Right. I've got to go and deal with a puppy that is probably not whining, but needs a piss and a shit and a walk and all that that dog stuff. He didn't. Prince Andrew's a nonce as well. Bye, everyone. Bye. Elvis lives in a bunker. In the 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 big hole, oh, maybe a dip. Then oh. <laughs> it the back. Now this is a light brown jacket. Cool story.